Now, skiza this two and two. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm so proud to be Kenyan, because Abu are Kenya, we don't give up. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are innovative people. All the time. There's this guy, mm -hmm. alikuwa an attacker. I mean, alikuwa ana job. Mm -hmm. So time ya COVID, ame pita pita kwa mall, ana pita tawa, ame beba kabag. Mm -hmm. Kabag kake kaka snatchiwa. Fua! So najua vile kuna wizi Nairobi. Baya. Akaamua, badala nilie. Aliona muizi ya kihepa na bagi yake ya mesinachio. Fua! Muizi ya kahepa. Vile ya nahepa hivi. Jamana ona idea. Imagine unangalia muizi hivi. Akihepa na bagi yako. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Akikama up na idea. Ati atengeneze electronic boxes za kueka vitu. Ndiyo kifika tau. Unaficha hapo. Uh, unaficha hapo ndani. Electronic lockers. Unaficha hapo ndani. Unafungia. Electronic. Ubebi ki. Unafungi hapo ndani. Unalipaka kitu. Ame kubalisho ziko kwa malls and all those places. And Kenyans are actually supporting this guy. Wanafukata au mtu wanakamzigo. Unakaholdu po kitoka kwa mathri. Unaficha mali kwa mall. Tutup. Unalock. Unakanja ule jamaa kitu yake. Alafu unaenda unarudi. You are safe. Kenyans. Bright. Kenyans Very bro. Bright. Haiko anywhere. Here is a story of Charles. The guy of electronic lockers. Wahapa Nairobi. Charles, Charles Odu, commonly known as Prince, but then I run an IoT company that embraces IoT technology in solving Africa's problems. So we have two products already in the market. One is um, around security, that is the smart lockers that offer temporary storage for people just, you know, running their errands within busy areas, uh, towns, supermarkets, swimming pools, gyms. So, and then the other one is around agriculture. Um, so basically, this is a gadget that um, fetches data for, from the soil and then relays it uh, in real time to the farmers. IoT in full means Internet of Things. So basically it's where hardware communicates to um, a backend via what we call the Internet. And then uh, the backend of course processes this information and then relays back um, an actuation of some sort of a way of correcting the, the system. We have two kind of models. So we have the model where the users come and tell the system whether they are storing or they are retrieving. So of course if you are a first time user, what you have to do is you have to tell the system you are storing. And then the system will go and analyze and tell you all the available lockers, um, locker sizes rather. So of course we have small, medium and large and in special cases extra large. So the user gets to choose. Um, I mean the size of the locker based on the size of his, his or uh, the item he or she wants to store. So from there of course we have prices all over the, 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 the lockers the, the, the customer can see and also the user journey how basically you can get to store your items. Um, so then from there once you've selected it, uh, once you have selected your size uh, it will ask you to enter a valid MPESA number. That number will be used to will be used during retrieval. So again, you'll have to confirm this number, and then automatically the locker will pop open, and then the customer can place their items there, close the locker, and of course there are no visible padlocks. You never get to see anything. So uh, we also guarantee security because they are metallic and they are very rigid and strong. From the menu, of course there is just two me two menus that store and retrieve. And then, so this time round, you'll tell the system you're retrieving. And then the system will ask you for the same MPESA number you used during storage. Now, this MPESA number is what we're going to bill you based on. So the system again will go back and calculate per your size versus the time. And then it will show you on the screen that uh, you have elapsed this, um, this duration. So this is the amount you're supposed to pay. Do you agree? If you select yes, then automatically what we call an SDK push will just appear on your phone where you just enter the M-Pesa um, I mean pin and the locker should open. All my innovations, um, they are basically just driven by my passion since when I was quite a young guy. Um, but then when the idea of getting into the real world and solving solutions came in, uh, I was in campus, this was around 2013. So I was just almost everywhere, I was just, you know, uh, connecting things here, seeing how they work connecting things there, seeing how they work, and I would be really happy about it. Until one day it really happened that I was a victim of, um, I was a victim of being conned in town. So we were just walking around with the laptops, and then one way or another, um, the laptop disappeared. And then this also happened that some few days earlier, I had just been conned a lot of money from uh, these guys who sell what we call the mud, uh, I don't know, dummy, dummy phones. 
So, but then I went back and then I was like, I have, I've been working on something like this, but then I wasn't uh, so serious about it. But then from then, I think I, I, saw, an, I saw a gap. I saw a gap that was not, um, uh, I don't know, uh, invested into well. So I started building at the time, but then I would ask for his exhibitions here and there once in a while, um, of which I will be honest with you, I really failed on a lot of them. I did not get any exhibition to be honest, with, especially at that level when I was still at the prototype level. Um, and then, so I graduated from JQuat in 2017. Um, I tried employment, it didn't work out. So I, I, I just said, I think I should just, you know, just go back to what really pushed me towards where I am today. So that again, that's my passion. I created the first plastic model, um, and then I went into where I am today. So I just presented to the CEO, Africa's Talking, uh, the plastic, of course, it was just a plastic basic model. But then he said, if you really think that this is something you want to venture into, then I think we are in with you. So I went into industrial area, I asked the lockup uh, producing guys, uh, they're called Ashut. So Ashut agreed to produce the lockers for us. And yeah, from there, we started now iterating on the business model. Um, we started approaching clients, um, and then we started creating more use cases for it. And just as a, as a matter of time, everything just started forming into shape. And uh, yeah, now we officially have people actually interested in the product. Mm -hmm. Our final product today looks like the, the ATM, the one that you actually use to, you know, transact your cash. Uh, actually, we call it the, the storage system ATM. Well, uh, I remember when COVID came in, we had actually deployed lockers in Mombasa at a restaurant called Azura. Um, and for us, we, we were actually already testing our markets. But then when COVID came, there was a very big hit on us. So we could not even uh, further proceed. So we just gave it some few, uh, you know, we, we, we didn't know that COVID was here to stay. So we were like, oh, okay, let's give it like two months. Let's just see how this thing rolls out. But then as a matter of time, we, you know, in the long run, something still has to go out there. But then one place that we really realized that was not being, uh, you know, manifested into well, was parcel deliveries. If anything, if anything, COVID has taught us is that you do not, um, a lot of things need to be, we need to, to reduce a lot of contact between, between each other. Mm -hmm. So our lockers at the time, one of the things that really came into our minds was, could we actually use these lockers for deliveries? I mean, I don't have to meet you and you're delivering your items to me. So again, it's also a matter of awareness, how many people have this kind of a product. Um, yeah, so the minute we saw that actually people are actually interested in the in uh, contactless deliveries, then we realized, oh, okay, then I think we have a business model. Mm -hmm. So we said, how about we combine the two use cases for storage and then for parcel deliveries mm -hmm. for e-commerce platforms? Well, uh, to be honest, I don't think I regret anything because I think I executed everything much more or less the way I wanted it. Um, but of course there are challenges that I had to meet a lot of them. I will not lie to you, the, we, we went through a lot of things before we, we got here. Um, but uh, I think one thing that kept us going is resilience. We kept on pushing and saying this thing has to go there. We found a lot of obstacles. We were like, oh no, we, we, we work for one month and then on the last day we were like, no, we forgot that part. Now, we are, are we going to start for fresh? Are we going to abandon this thing? So we just said no. We're going to push for a battle.